the 55 most climate vulnerable countries in the world, despite emitting only 5% of global emissions, stand to lose the most. So we have not created this problem in the first place. If you speak from a moral standpoint, countries who have done the most damage should compensate countries who are the victims. It's a good moral argument. But is it a practical argument? Do you think countries who have polluted the most will give compensation when Bangladesh is sinking? I don't think so. I think the practical solution is, yes, that needs to be done, but young people in the global south have to take action, have to take leadership, have to figure out how do you adapt. So I think the solution has to come from young people. So our response is we educate young people, give them the skills, give them the knowledge, and help them to run businesses that either remove excess greenhouse gases, reduce emission of greenhouse gases, or help us adapt what kind of crop will grow when your land is underwater. There is a lot of opportunity for innovation in agriculture. So that is where the Global Youth Leadership Center is going to focus its energy. What you said, the question you said, that's a very relevant question and I think it's on everyone's mind. But, uh, but that's not GYLC's singular mission, to just keep on demanding that someone else has created the problem, we should be compensated, because we feel this is not how the world works. If you look at the history of the last 2,000 years, this is not how the world works. So we have to take ownership and solve our own problem. This is the main focus of the field visit. The summit has different components. The first objective of the summit is to bring young people and experts and policy makers. So we have world-renowned climate scientists like Sir David King, who was the UK government's chief scientific advisor. We have Dr. Selimul Hawk, Bangladesh's celebrated climate scientist. And we have policy makers like Dr. Gohar Rizvi, Naeem Rajab, Dr. Shreem Shamin Chaudhary. So they will be engaging with young people to talk about the climate challenge. So there's a lot of knowledge sharing, there's capacity building, we have a lot of panels on modernizing farming, on agriculture, on renewable energy, a lot of capacity building. And then young people also go in the community to see for themselves the challenge the community is facing. The mangrove plantation is a demonstration that young people can play a part. When 150 young people are planting the mangrove plantation, which is a defense for the coastal region, and which also is a carbon sink, you're demonstrating that you can take action, the power of an individual action, and they will also see an eco-friendly village look at different projects. So that's, that's one of the objectives of the, of the summit. Uh, I started doing summits in 2011 in Bangladesh, before national elections, I did a lot of manifestos, declarations. The issue with declaration, although they can be helpful, is there is one party that is always demanding something from the other party. Okay? So it's a declaration, I demand this from you, so I give you the power. But what we are trying to do at the Global Youth Climate Summit is to tell young people, you have the agency. You make a contribution. Don't wait for others to solve your problem. Take ownership, do your part. You know? So that's what we are going to focus on. But yes, to respond to your question, there's also going to be a Kulna declaration, which Shohan said we are working on it, uh, which is also going to be a balance between what others need to do versus what I need to do. Because when you're talking about social change, we always have a plan for other people to change, but we never want to change ourselves. So we are going to ask the difficult questions to young people. You're talking about climate change, but how are you changing your lifestyle? So these are you know, difficult conversations that we need to have and also ask ourselves that how are we changing our lifestyle, our own consumption, our own diet, our own footprint. Uh, and if we are always blaming other people, then society will not change. <laughs>